a young hairdresser in the audience raised her hand and said, JP, everyone sold out or went to other departments of distribution other than you. What happens if you die? Why'd you go about putting on these expensive shows at the time that, as I understand it, were kind of all smoke and mirrors? Well, we had to make a statement, especially for those that started to buy our product. So I realized that through working through other shows, I could get for very little down a nice, beautiful room in a hotel, like a ballroom, on the days it wasn't being used really cheap, which was usually at noon and on a Sunday, nobody was booking it. So I went to the Biltmore Hotel in downtown LA, very nice hotel, and got the big room really inexpensively. And Paul and I and friends of ours went to every salon imaginable and gave them all invitations to go to our show. And we had a stack of books and products there to sell. I had a friend of mine uh, that was wonderful, Marianne, and she gave us some flowers, so it looked really, really neat. Right? I just called on friends to help out there. And I, I rented a tuxedo. I think in those days it cost like $15 to rent one for one day. And we looked like a million dollars, right? And Paul and I were all dressed up there. and We just looked like we were just on top of the world. However, and what little catering we had was another friend of mine that pitched it in but we had to sell product and what books we had at that show in order to get out of the show to finish paying the bill and that's how we pulled that one off so that was one good one so we improvised but starting out we did that one major show and uh, it was kind of smoke and mirrors but it looked really good so uh, explain why the now famous black and white packaging well, we're black and white bottles now because we had all of our artwork done. We had it done in black and white and then a little extra add color to it. However, the silk screener to silk screen color on wanted seven cents. Black and white was only two cents a run. We were very limited. Even though the bill would be due within 30 days, we were very limited. So we just went for what's the cheapest. Well, as it turned out, black and white became unisex. So that was a good decision, even though we did it because we were desperate. <laughs> How key do you think was promising that unsold products could be returned for a complete refund? We felt that our product was so good that if you used it, you would want it and you'd want to continue using it. We were that confident. So we told all the hairdressers that we sold our product to, this product is so good that if you use it within 30 days, if you're not completely satisfied, happy as can be, and your customers too, we will refund your money. In the first five years, and this is when I kept track of it, to the best of my knowledge, only two bottles were ever returned. That was it. Really? That was it, two. Wow. Being only in salons has been one thing that's been consistent from day one yeah. with John Paul Mitchell's systems. Why have you continued to maintain that? Well, as most people know, most companies that go in the beauty industry, professional beauty industry, say, I'm going to stay only in salons, not go anywhere else, okay? That's where I'm going to stay. And all of a sudden, you see them in department stores, grocery stores, every place else. It's because that's what they said to get in the industry. But afterwards, well, they wanted the money, and then they blamed on somebody else. Mine was when I had absolutely nothing. You guys believe me that I would stay in the industry. I will never let you down. I'd probably be four times my size now if I went to the full general market. But worldwide, worldwide. Wide. All of our distributors are contracted only to sell to beauty salons. Four times your size, meaning four Growth? times oh, size. more oh, gosh, financially yes. successful? Financially, be four times my size, maybe more, who knows. Be and that's why you see Paul Mitchell sometimes in drugstores and supermarkets. They buy it that when it's counterfeit, they say, well, we didn't know it was counterfeit. Maybe they didn't. When it's black market, diverted, gray market, they buy it because the demand is there. If they have Paul Mitchell on the shelf, even if they charge $2 more, People buy because they don't know what Paul Mitchell sells for. They just know it's a high-end product. Oh, my God, if I opened up the floodgates, we'd be four times our size overnight. But I would have broken my promise when I had absolutely nothing and people believed in me. So ethically, I stuck by him. By the way, I put Paul Mitchell into a 360-year trust. I own the majority of the company, so even if I die, no one could take it out of the professional beauty industry for 360 years. And why, why was it important to you to do it that? It was important to me to do something like this because back in 2004, a young hairdresser in the audience raised her hand and said, JP, everyone sold out or went to other departments of distribution other than you. What happens if you die? I thought, ooh, good question. So I went looking around for a trust, and I found one that would last 360 years. So I now have 340 some odd years left on it. So that means 
it can't get sold to a big conglomerate. If I die, nobody could sell Paul Mitchell. They couldn't sell the, I own the majority of the company, they couldn't sell it. It must stay in the professional beauty industry. And a major conglomerate that wanted to buy Paul Mitchell, sure as all heck would not buy it with the condition and the contract, you can never take it out of the professional beauty industry. They wouldn't do it, because they'd buy it because they know if they would mass retail, they'd get all their money back probably in a year or two.